let me give you some definitions okay so i'll give you the definition of partial derivative okay so suppose you have function of two variables okay fx y okay so what is del f by del x so del f but is is exactly like derivative is just that now what you're doing is this you are holding y fixed and you're just finding the derivative with respect to x okay that's all that you're doing okay uh, so you're treating y as if it's a constant okay and then just differentiating this with respect to x that's del f by del x is that clear to everyone okay just this is just the derivative okay so if you want to write it formally you can write it like this limit as h goes to zero okay f of x plus h okay y minus fx y okay divided by h okay uh, so that's that's del f by del x okay evaluated at x y is that clear to everyone yes or no okay that's the definition of derivative but you are holding y fixed that's why i'm just keeping this this value exactly the same okay uh, similarly you can define the partial derivative del f by del y as limit as h goes to zero okay f of x comma y plus h minus fx y upon h okay now can you tell me if u is equal to x y what is del u by del x what is del u by del x? Fine. Very good. And what is del u by del y? X. X. Very good. Okay. That's it. You know, I mean, just just treat this as if it's a constant, and just find the derivative with respect to the other variable. Okay. That's it. You know, that's uh, uh, so if if let's say this u is a utility function, this is known as the marginal utility of x. And this is known as a marginal utility of y. Okay, so it turns out that you know the slope of the indifference curve has some connection with this. Okay, so let me give you that connection as well. Okay, uh, so suppose you have this utility function u x y. Okay, uh, and then what we can do is if we just consider the indifference curve. So indifference curve has this equation, right? That uh, the set of all points that gives you the same level of satisfaction. So you can set the level of satisfaction to some constant mu okay and then what you can do is you can just do the derivative okay uh, so you know you can just write like this del u by del x plus del u by del y into dy by dx right equal to zero right i mean that's that's how we remember that's how we used to do the derivative implicit differentiation uh the differentiation of an implicit function you know that's exactly what it is so if you just write it like this you're going to get dy by dx is equal to minus del u by del x upon del u by del y okay and uh, if you take its absolute value you know you'll get rid of this okay this is known as the marginal rate of substitution because that's the absolute value of the slope right marginal so this is another way of you know uh, figuring out marginal rate of substitution and if you see in the numerator you have marginal utility of x okay so you can call this mux okay in the, in the denominator you have marginal utility of y okay uh, this is known as muy as i've just told you okay uh, so you know this is uh, the connection between mrs and the marginal utilities okay associated with x and y okay so is that is that clear to everyone okay by the way i'm assuming that utilities are increasing increasing functions okay uh, so, so that the absolute value is actually you know if you just take the negative off you know uh, negative negative sign off you'll get the absolute value okay so is is that is that fine okay now if you remember you know for uh, uh, for checking for concavity okay uh, 
for single variable functions you know there was the second derivative test right so if the second derivative of the function is less than or equal to zero everywhere you know you will say that the function is concave uh, so, so so it turns out that there is a similar thing over here also so now i'm going to assume that the function f you know of two variables is twice differentiable okay uh, so this is how you can check it okay uh, so that this is a condition which is required okay uh, so what you're going to do is you want to take the second order partial derivative with respect to x okay so what that means is first you differentiate partially differentiate f with respect to x then you partially differentiate so when i say partially differentiate I, I mean exactly the same thing that you hold y fixed okay so first you for partial differentiate f with respect to x then whatever result you're going to get you partial differentiate that with respect to x again okay uh, so del f del 2 f by del x2 you know this is the uh, this is the second order partial derivative of f with respect to x and this should be less than or equal to zero is that okay for concavity now this is this alone is not enough you also want because a multivariable function you also want concavity with respect to y also okay and you also want one more condition you know that uh, because you know uh, changing x also changes uh, del f by del y similarly changing y also changes del f by del x so you want that this product okay the product of these two terms okay should be the dominant okay so what that means is this product should be greater than or equal to so if you first partially differentiate f with respect to x then you partially differentiate f with respect to y okay and then take the square of it okay so this is you know the requirement you know for concavity is that clear to everyone okay so this uh is just identical to you know what you had for first uh you know function of one variable okay but we also have this additional requirement you know just to make sure that uh when x changes uh, the derivative of f with respect to y doesn't change uh too too fast okay uh, because then there's a possibility that uh uh you know the function may not give may not remain concave okay uh, so uh so uh so this is the required these are the requirements is that clear to everyone okay uh similarly for convexity you know this is for concavity okay for convexity the requirements are Uh, del 2f del x2 is greater than or equal to 0 del 2f del y2 is greater than or equal to 0 okay uh, exactly the same way as we had for one variable function okay uh, and then you also again the same thing you know this product should dominate this one okay uh, so that the function is indeed concave sorry convex Is that clear? Okay, fine. So only these two signs will flip. This will stay the same. Okay, is that clear? So f is convex if these inequalities are true at every xy. F is concave if this inequality is true at every xy. Is that clear? Okay, now let's quickly check for x to the power half, y to the power half. If you remember, this function was concave. Yes, yes or no? We saw that in 3D graph. Yes or no? Okay. So let's quickly check that you know these conditions are true for this particular function. Okay. Uh, so what is del f by del x? Anybody? What is del f by del x? What is del f by del x? Uh, 
okay let me just differentiate this so one upon two x to the power half into y to the power half right okay so that's uh del f by del x similarly del f by del y is one upon two y to the power half x to the power half okay fine now let's do this uh del 2f by del x2 okay so if you look at this term uh well let's differentiate this again okay uh, so what are we going to get well um, this is x to the power minus half so uh, uh so you're going to get what um minus one by four okay uh, and then x to the power three by two right just check this <coughs> and in the numerator it will be y to the power half okay so this is x to the power three by two okay and this is del 2f by del y2 which is also symmetric so 1 minus 1 by 4 x to the power half y to the power 3 by 2 okay okay now what we're going to do is this you know i mean of course these are negative you know we have seen that so this is these this, these two requirements are met we also have to check that this requirement is met so what we're going to do is we're going to differentiate this with respect to y okay because del f by del x so you have to differentiate this with respect to y to get this term okay uh, so you're going to get what del 2f del x del y is equal to so differentiate this we are going to get 1 by 4 x to the power half okay and this is going to come in the denominator you're going to get y to the power half okay is that clear okay now let's take these the product of these two and square this one and compare it okay if you want to take the product of these two you're going to get what 1 by 16 okay uh, so this is x to the power 3 by 2 this is x to the power half which is going to come down so you're going to get x to the power half in the denominator is it x no x in the denominator because x to the power 3 by 2 minus x to the power of minus x to the power 3 by 2 minus half is x to the power 1 okay so you're going to get 1 by 16 x y if you're going to take the product of these two and if you're going to take the square of this two you are again going to get uh 1 by 16 x y you know which are which which is basically both are equal and since they are equal it satisfies this condition so the function is concave 